Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Why, hello there. So, I know that there are so many beautiful, well-intentioned people out in this world that perhaps just can't see the forest for the trees, perhaps can't think out of the box, perhaps, you know, can't see the bigger picture in so many ways. So what's a red herring? Have you ever heard of that phrase, a red herring? And I don't mean a fish. I mean something intended to divert attention from the real problem or matter at hand. A misleading clue. Something that will occupy our minds, offer us an answer that forms our worldview, perhaps even, and forms our worldview in an incorrect manner purposefully it's a lot like you know basically trying to find your way home on a path and the path leads to nowhere really it just leads down one dead end after another after another after another have you ever thought that humanity is kind of like mice on a wheel hamsters on a wheel i mean they're running their little butts off they think they're getting somewhere but are they i know that's a really difficult one to take a close hard look at and actually accept and adopt but look at our situation look where we're at and look at whose rules we've been following and how is that working for us exactly you know things have been stuck and if you're running on a treadmill, you're not going to get anywhere. And when we're all jumbled up on this wheel of life and we're looking through the same lens, the lens that they have given to us in order to mold and create our world vision, if we don't realize that we're looking through their lens and who's their lens, well, you know, they are the controllers, the controllers of this world that frame our opinions, that give us, well, they give us certain quotes. And, you know, this is just one particular politician there. Uh, and, you know, of course, he was tweeting like crazy because of it being Easter. But he's always tweeting like this anyway. And it's politicians on both sides of the aisle as well, not just from the right and not just from the left. And when we speak about right and left, we see it doesn't really matter. And, you know, we're noticing where's their hands? You know, where the where does their hand lay? Where does their heart lay? Really? You know, it doesn't really matter right or left. Right or left is all part of the same coin. Part of the same coin giving us part of the same script. It's a consistent script that they're giving us. And again, it doesn't matter. The times may change a little. The faces may change. The names may change. The script remains the same. It's all part of a bigger, bigger plan. I know this is really says a lot. Just some of these pictures here looking at these beings, the controllers who make all the laws, putting their hand on, on this, what's supposed to be a very sacred book, yet they keep acting in, in ways that are just really not nice. And they might even want you to think of them in, in terms that are not, uh, well, flattering. To say the least, as long as you're looking through the lens that they've given you, as long as it's through the lens that they have given you, and whether you know you view them from a right or a left point of view, or from even a good and evil point of view, it doesn't really matter as long as you're looking at it from the point of view they want you to look at it. Again, a red herring is something that gets us looking down the wrong path. 
we we don't even consider things often that are not part of the script so you know what's really going on here again we look at genesis 11 6 then the lord the elohim we should you know when we're talking about mistranslations Elohim is, is the word that's used, and Elohim is plural, and it just means the mighty ones. Mighty ones, plural, not singular. And so the Elohim said, if they have begun to do this as one people speaking the same language, then nothing they devise will go beyond them. Because they are one people with one language, one mind, working together. They're not fighting each other. They're working together. Hey, we can't have that. Come, let us go down there. Confuse their language so they will not understand one another's speech. And let's give them a red herring so that they're going to be just basically mice on the wheel looking in the wrong direction the entire time, not seeing the, the real reality of the situation, not seeing that they are policing themselves. They are controlling themselves. They are nothing but mice on the wheel running nowhere as long as they keep going down the same philosophical ideologies that <laughs> basically distract them from the truth of the matter, which is that they are nothing but mice on the wheel. They're running down the wrong dead ends time and time again. The clues are out there for, for all to see, but still the mass part of the population doesn't understand the bigger picture that's going on here the much bigger picture and how this you know goes this goes deep and this is ancient and again these societies that are very secret have controlled the narrative for a very very long time and this is how they keep us on the path to nowhere it's true, it's true. It doesn't really matter how, which way you go as long as you do what Mike has been saying and go down that specific path that they lay forward. And people have spent their entire lives, their entire, um, maybe even in some cases, life savings just to learn something as long as it comes out of this book, but, you know, make everything that they know and they do and they understand, make sure it comes out of that one belief system. So it, it's really hard to just sort of set that belief system down and believe in something different. But I ask you again, you know, how's the, how is this current way working for you? So, you know, what's, what's the bottom line here? The bottom line is as long as we keep arguing over incorrect translations and, you know, keep ourself in a limited frame of mind and buying the narrative that they've given us because again just just look at that it is obvious this is one of the biggest control mechanisms that there is again it's a red herring it's something intended to divert attention away from the real problem or matter at hand a misleading clue a misleading direction that leads us on that great path to nowhere thinking we're getting the answers but no we're just we're still in their game still trapped in the mindset that they want to create for us we're still acting like mice on a wheel running our butts off going nowhere mm -hmm. absolutely yes so open your minds open your eyes and just see the different possibilities that are out there and you know we we get a lot of good comments all the time and you could see when somebody's still trapped in a mindset because of the conditioning and really you know these are these are wonderful people that are still trapped in a mindset they just cannot conceive that perhaps everything they've been taught is really all about constructing this maze all around you so that you can't find your way out so that you're always wandering down one path after another path after another path that leads to nowhere as uh, Yeshua Jesus said and again 
you know, Yeshua is a name that his friends would call him by. They wouldn't say Jesus. And again, that's another kind of red herring uh, because that's the Romanized, Latinized uh, version of Jesus, which is the Greek, which is again, you know, not the actual name, which again is, is just another one of those little things, little things that could keep nudging us down at the wrong path. He said the kingdom of God lies within you. He said that you would do greater things than him. How could that be? How could that be? And as we've said many times, what's the opposite of love? Well, it's actually not hate. It's fear. So then how could the fear of God be the beginning of wisdom? It's, it's something that just couldn't be. But when we look at it from a controlling point of view, and we look at it from the point of view of the stories that come out of Sumeria, which predate anything biblically by thousands of years, well, they, they say that the gods, quote-unquote, the Elohim, which just means mighty ones, basically, well, they've created mankind to be a slave race, and slaves should fear their masters. That's the bottom line. Slaves should fear their masters. Slaves should never fear the source of all. Freemen should never fear the source of all. The source of all is not vindictive. Not at all. There is a law of cause and effect, which we could call karma. But no, there there isn't a source of all that there is in the multiverse that lies around us in the myriad of different di dimensions that's just waiting to punish us. No, no, no. That's more about slave masters and slaves. That's a reptilian mindset. That's a draconian mindset. And that's the mindset of the system that we have in place around us right now, which penetrates through our leadership. And it doesn't matter if you're left or if you're right. It's all two heads, two sides of the same coin. Thank you guys for being part of the family. Uh, make sure you are subscribed. Have the bell clicked for notifications. Thanks for your support on Ko-Fi and Patreon. As always, guys, God bless and namaste. Namaste.